I'm Roy Potter, a former U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel. Welcome to the Potter Exposit. Hello everyone, today is June 6th, 2018. I'm Roy Potter. Thank you for visiting with us. A couple of things this day I'd like to cover. The first is the situation in Tucson. As I warned in my live stream yesterday, we need to be careful not to jump to too many conclusions here. Yes, there are a lot of correspondences, a lot of coincidences, a lot of circumstantial evidence. <clears throat> However, as I mentioned, I spent a good deal of time studying the homeless camp deal down there back in 2011 along with the immigration problem those two documentaries I did at the same time and as I look more at this and even Craig Sawyer is saying you know let's back off of this a little bit now what we need to do is just get law enforcement involved because they haven't been and I told you why yesterday that the Tucson city is now under basically martial law with the 2013 resolution passed by the city council to be in subjection to the commander of Mountain Air Force Base. The, the police department lost a lot of people, uh, and I, I believe there's some problems there anyway. There are certainly ties between Tucson and CMEX and all the things there that we are suspect of. But as I look more at the evidence, and as I said yesterday during my live stream, you know, those things called wrist restraints that people are think, thinking are part of a wrist restraint or a, a rape tree, I don't think so. I've, I have seen some of those before, and they're for storing things up high so animals can't get them. That's one of the things they use them for. So be real careful about what you're suspecting here. We don't want to sound the alarm uh, and be dragged into something that really isn't the case, and then to be rejected and made fun of later. Now, that's not to disparage the people that are down there trying to look for homeless vets and who came upon this and had to investigate their suspicions. And it's very likely that the Tucson PD and the Tucson City Council along with that local FBI and whoever else is down there, they're probably all corrupt. Yes, I, I agree with the ties and all that. Uh, I could tell you some other information, but I guess what I'm saying here is that let's see what law enforcement does now. If they do what they've done in the past, which is to drop this whole thing, then maybe we can go from there. Uh, it's a very uh, aggravating situation, but really... We don't want to, to, to step on a booby trap. We don't want to step you know, on something that's going to bring a lot of people in unnecessarily. The passionate call Nathan Stoltman made a mention of, you know, this thing is really running on emotion now, and, and that's very true. So I appreciate Craig Sawyer kind of calming things down and saying, look, let's let the law enforcement people look at it. And like I say, they may not. Uh, our law enforcement in this country, too much of it is corrupt, and I realize that, and that's kind of the next subject I want to talk about here, and that's the Las Vegas Bundy case. Kind of ties in as far as the corruption is concerned. Sheriff Lombardo is up for re-election. I can't even believe that, that anybody had let him, but of course that shows that the casinos have him in their pocket, and the mob, and, and the corrupt FBI, and the DOJ, etc. 
But what I want to bring up here is a tie into Jeff Sessions. I saw a an article this morning uh, from a lady who said that th- that that President Trump is really hurting the country and and really denigrating and degrading Jeff Sessions in public, and he shouldn't do that. And how terrible it is. Well, I will agree that I don't understand why he keeps him on if he feels the way he does about him, which I'm sure he does. He ought to just fire him. But of course, supposedly he's between this rock and a hard place. Well, be that as it may. Jeff Sessions has proven who he is in the Bundy case, in asset forfeiture, in the marijuana thing, everything he's doing. Somebody said, oh, he's hiring new attorneys. Is that really what we want is to increase the size of government? Are they really going after the bad people? That's not been the case for so long. The FBI agents are afraid to testify because of what they'll get from the FBI higher-ups. And don't kid yourself. A lot of those FBI agents have done the same things to the American people that their higher-ups are doing to the president, framing them, setting them up, you know, giving them basically, yeah, you know, setting them up to do, to, to be charged with crimes that they never intended to commit. I've seen it for years. And it's a shame. The FBI is corrupt to the core. And these people that are afraid to come forward and to, and to spill the beans on it just proves who they are. I don't care if they are worried about their pensions or retaliation. Are they going to allow people, innocent people to continue to be hurt? Human trafficking, trafficking to continue? And these things, because that's what you're doing by your silence. Silence is agreement. And I don't care what your excuse is, FBI agents, anybody else in the IC. So here we go with this justification for Sessions. Oh, it's so terrible that the president's berating him. Jeff Sessions said that Steve Myrie in the Bundy case did a good job, and that's where I'm going with this. And he knew, he must have known at the time, the corruption that had happened at the DOJ at that point. But it was about protecting Clinton and Harry Reid and the rest of the cabal that is invested in Uranium One and in these Chinese connections. Jeff Sessions doesn't deserve any support, doesn't deserve any help. (laughs) <laughs> Sometimes I'm a loss for words when I get upset, so I'll calm down. So I want to tell you a little bit more about the Larry Wooten memo, okay? It's what blew that case wide open to show that the DOJ, the FBI, the BLM, and others had involved themselves in corrupt and criminal practices and then hid it from the defense, exculpatory evidence. That's your Jeff Sessions. And I know that started under Obama, but Jeff Sessions allowed it and even encouraged it to continue. Larry Wooten memo, it was released. He was a BLM agent who got involved and couldn't stand the corruption anymore and spoke out very much to his own, you know, it could have been a big dangerous problem for him. So Larry Wooten did that. Well, there's a second memo, and I mentioned this several videos back, and I wanted to bring it up again because there's an article written in Redoubt News called Release the Second Wooten Memo, and I'd like you to go there, and I'm going to read part of it here now because I think it's that important. Redoubt News, okay, R-E-D-O-U-B-T News. This is written by, if I remember right, yeah, Sherry Duval. Okay, she's, she's done this more, okay? And... Let me just read a few things here so that you'll know how important it is. I don't want this to go on too long. It's already been seven minutes. Larry Wooten is the whistleblower that came forward during the Bunkerville standoff trial in Las Vegas last year and revealed the atrocities being committed by the Bureau of Land Management and the federal prosecutors in the case headed by Stephen Myrie and now also by Jeff Sessions. Okay, of course, that, that case has been dismissed against most a lot of the defendants, but a lot of them, including a Todd Engel, are still in trouble here at this point. So let me go through a couple of other things here, okay? Um, She talks about the second memo, and I want to get down to that where, here it is here. Warren Markowitz, Engel's attorney, would like to have Larry Wooten testify in a deposition, the cost of which could have been prohibitive at roughly $10,000. However, supporters of Engel rallied this weekend and raised the needed funds. They're trying to go forward and get this second memo with even more detailed corruption released that, that Wooten wrote. It's time to get this done. It is time to depose Larry Wooten, get his information on the record for the world to see, and release Todd Engel and the remaining defendants. And I agree. So go see that. It's on Redoubt News. And I'll finish up by saying this, okay? 
We have our leaders, even President Trump, declaring how great America is and that we want to, to show the rest of the world what it's like to, to use truth, justice in the American way and that they should emulate us. Not force our, we shouldn't be forcing ourselves on others, but we, we tout ourselves as being so great. We want, to, we want to right the injustices in the rest of the world. Well, normally, that's an excuse for a tyrant. But I will end with this, okay, and I've said it before. We cannot deny injustice throughout the world if we continue to deny justice at home. We cannot give what we do not possess. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Out here for now. Thanks for everything.